Welcome to this new life. We are so excited about you watching this program, and I believe with all my heart that God has something extraordinary, something great uh, for you today. And uh, today we have a wonderful friend of mine, a guest speaker, that uh, I know he has a powerful word from God that's going to be right into your life, that's going to be helpful in your life and your situation. So please open up your heart as we invite our guest speaker, Richard Gunning, to come and share the Word of God. It's good to be with you once again. And in recent days, I've been speaking to you about the Bible and the message of the Bible. You know, the Bible is a very big book. In fact, it's a collection of 66 different books. But there's one thing that the Bible has that is very common, that is a common thread throughout the whole Bible. The Bible is speaking about the coming of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that more than 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came down to earth in the form of a man. He lived a sinless life. He died on the cross for your sins and for my sins and for the sins of everyone who has ever lived and who ever will live. He was dead and buried and then he rose again on the third day. And the Bible tells us in great detail about the death of Jesus Christ, about that great and terrible day when the Son of God laid down his life and died a terrible death on the cross to take the punishment for the sins of men and women throughout history. I want to look at the death of Jesus Christ today. I want to talk to you about different characters who were there on that day when Jesus died on the cross. You see, these different characters that we are going to look at for a few minutes today, they had very different attitudes to Jesus as he hung on the cross, dying for the sins of the world. And those different attitudes, they are represented in the hearts and lives of men and women today. And as you are listening to me speaking, wherever you are sitting as you listen, Maybe you can recognize those different heart attitudes. Maybe one of these heart attitudes is reflected in your life. And maybe this will challenge you. And maybe you need to make a change. And maybe you need to change your heart attitude to Jesus Christ dying on the cross for your sins and for my sins. Let's look at these different people who were there. If you have a Bible, you can read about them in John chapter 19, verses 17 to 26. The first person <coughs> that we read about is a man called Pontius Pilate. Now, Pilate was a political leader. In fact, he was the top leader in the Holy Land at that time. He was a Roman soldier, and he was also a Roman governor and leader. And Pilate had the power of life and death over everyone who lived in that land at that time. His soldiers would do whatever he told them to do. If he told them to execute somebody, they would do it without question. They would follow his orders because he was the top man. He was the top leader. One day, the Jewish religious leaders brought a prisoner to Pilate. That prisoner was Jesus Christ. The religious leaders had accused him falsely. They didn't like Jesus' teaching, and they wanted to put him to death. But they didn't have the authority to do that. The only person who could condemn somebody to death was this man, Pontius Pilate. This leader, this governor, this high official and military commander. And Pilate considered the case. He listened to their accusations against Jesus. And then he asked Jesus some questions. But Jesus really said very little in his own defense. 
And Pilate considered the case. And three times, three times, he says to the crowd and to the religious leaders, I find no fault in this man. And then Pilate's wife sent a message to him. And she said, don't have anything to do with that innocent man because I have suffered much in a dream last night because of him. You see, the Bible says of Jesus Christ that he was tempted in every way like us, but yet he never sinned. But that's not true of you and me. The Bible says that we have all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. And we need to find forgiveness. And that forgiveness is only found in the person of Jesus Christ. Pilate considers the case. And then he gets a great idea. And he says, I'll offer them Jesus. And I'll offer them a terrible murderer and rebellious leader called Barabbas, who has committed murder. And I will ask the people to choose Jesus or Barabbas. Surely they will choose Jesus Christ, the holy man, the prophet, the miracle worker. But to Pilate's horror, the crowd start to shout, you know, like a football crowd. They start to shout, we want Barabbas, we want Barabbas. And fear comes into the heart of Pontius Pilate. And Pilate makes a decision that is based on fear. And he decides that he will release to them Barabbas, the murderer, the bandit, the terrorist leader. And he gives Jesus over to his soldiers to be beaten and to be crucified. You see, Pilate was convinced about Jesus Christ, but he was a coward. Maybe you're listening to me today. Maybe you've heard about Jesus Christ. And you want to believe in Jesus, but you're afraid of what other people might say or think. And so for that reason, you don't open your heart for Jesus Christ. You don't ask him to forgive you your sins and to give you peace with God and eternal life. Because you are like Pontius Pilate. You are convinced about Jesus, but you are a coward. Don't be like that today. If you feel that God is speaking to you and challenging you to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, don't put it off. Don't be fearful of what others might say or think, but open your heart for Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. That's the door of your heart. And he says, if you will open the door, I will come in and I will have fellowship with you. A second group of people We're also there at that scene where Jesus Christ died on the cross. And they were the religious people. They were the people who had brought him to Pilate. They were the people who had demanded the death sentence for Jesus. You see, they thought they were very religious, very holy. They were following all the rules and all the regulations of their religion. But you know, religion cannot save. Religion is the hand of man reaching up, trying to touch God. But the message that I'm preaching to you today is the hand of God reaching down to men in the person of Jesus Christ to save us from our sins and to give us eternal life. The religious leaders were there. They were self-righteous. They had seen his miracles. They had heard him preach. They had seen him do many wonderful things, but their hearts were hardened and they were trusting in their religion. Maybe you're listening to me today and you're trusting in your religion. You see, religion is rules, regulations, ceremonies. Do this, don't do that. Don't touch this, don't touch that. Follow all these rules and regulations. But you see, rules and regulations cannot save us. The Bible says that we are saved, that we are forgiven our sins by faith and not by works. 
In fact, the Bible even goes too far as to, to say that all our good deeds are like filthy rags in the sight of a holy God. So I say to you today, don't trust in religion because religion cannot save. Only Jesus can save. Only Jesus can give us peace with God. Only Jesus can give us eternal life. Don't be like the religious people. Don't trust in religion because religion cannot save. A third group of people were there. On that day when Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world on the cross, for everyone who will believe, men and women, boys and girls, from every country, from every background, from every culture, from every religion, Jesus died for them all. On that day, another group of men were there. And they were the Roman soldiers. They were the men who had the terrible task of taking people who had been sentenced to death by Pilate, taking them outside the city to a hill, preparing the crosses, getting the nails, getting the hammer, and nailing those people who were sentenced to death to that cross. They had done this many times. This was just part of their daily work. And these men were tough, brutal men. They showed no mercy. It didn't matter how much a man would struggle and scream and beg for mercy. It didn't matter how much blood was flowing from the wounds, from the nails in their hands and in their feet. These men had a job to do. And they were absolutely ruthless and showed no mercy. They were the men who nailed Jesus Christ to the cross. But the thing I want you to notice is this. After they had nailed Jesus to the cross, they took his coat, which they had removed from him before they nailed him to the cross. And they sat down behind his cross and they looked upon his coat and they said, this is a beautiful coat. Let's gamble for it and see who should have it because it's a very nice piece of material and we don't want to cut it in pieces. So we'll gamble for it and see which one of us should have this nice coat that belonged to Jesus Christ. You see, the thing that I want you to learn from these soldiers is this. They were not interested in Jesus Christ, but they were very interested in things that belonged to Jesus. You know, there are many people like that today. They're not interested in Jesus dying on the cross for their sins, but they're interested in the things that belong to Jesus. They're interested in healing. They're interested in blessings. They're interested in things that belong to Jesus. But Jesus doesn't want us just to be interested in things that belong to him. Jesus wants us to be interested in him. Jesus wants us to put our faith in him and his death on the cross for our sins over 2,000 years ago on that terrible day in Jerusalem. Don't be like the Roman soldiers, only interested in the things that belong to Jesus Christ. Another group of people were there, a fourth group, and they were the ordinary people. The Bible tells us that the place where Jesus was crucified was outside the city, and that there were many people passing by. Let me just use my imagination for a moment. I can imagine two men passing by, going home from work. Perhaps they've been working in the fields. And they look over and one man says to his friend, Oh look, there's a crucifixion. Who is that man on the center cross? I think I've seen him before. Who is that man? Oh yes, I know who that is. 
That's the man from Galilee. That's the man who went around preaching to big crowds. That's the man who did many miracles. Yes, I've heard that he even raised some people from the dead. But look at him now. He's hanging on a cross. The Romans have taken him and they've nailed him to a cross. Oh dear, how terrible that is. What an awful sight. I hate the way the Romans do that to people and how they, they nail them to crosses. And it's so sad to see that man, Jesus, hanging on a cross after all the good things he did. But then his friend says to him, well, you know, time is going and uh, our wives have probably prepared our dinner. We'd better hurry on home. You see, those men were just passing by. They did not come by faith to the cross of Jesus Christ. They just stood back and watched from a distance and then they passed by and went away. But spiritually speaking, Jesus wants us to come to the cross. Jesus wants us to look at him through the eyes of faith and to understand that on that cross over 2,000 years ago outside the city of Jerusalem, he suffered and died in our place. God took the punishment that we rightly deserve for our sins. He took your punishment, he took my punishment, and he put it all on Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus wasn't dying there for his own sins, because the Bible says he was without sin. But he died for your sin and for my sin. And the Bible encourages us to come by faith to the cross of Jesus Christ. To look upon him on that cross by faith. And to receive the free gift of salvation that he offers to everyone who believes. Don't be like these two men. Don't just listen to this message and then when it ends, switch off and go away without making a response. Don't be like those two men who were just passing by. Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me. You see, there's no place to just kind of be in the middle, neither for Jesus nor against him. Because Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me. If you're not with me, you're on the other side. We all have to make a decision about the cross of Jesus Christ. And finally, we come to a last group of people. The Bible tells us that there were some women standing by the cross of Jesus Christ. And spiritually speaking today, that is where we all should be. We all should be standing, spiritually speaking, close to the cross of Jesus Christ. Looking at him by faith. With thankfulness in our hearts for the fact that on that cross he took our punishment. He took our place and he died for your sins and mine. The Bible tells us that some women were there. Let's look quickly at these women. Let me look at two of them in particular. The first one was his mother, Mary. The Bible tells us that Jesus was born physically to his mother, Mary, the Virgin Mary. He was born by a virgin birth because God alone was his father. She was a good lady. She had lived a holy and a pure life. And she was specially chosen by God to be the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ, physically speaking. Jesus was born to the Virgin Mary. And as he died on that cross, Mary was there. You see, Mary represents the good people in life. She had lived a good life, a holy life, 
secure life. But she also understood. She also recognized that she was also a sinner. You see, she represents the good people in life. Maybe you're listening to me. Maybe you think you're a good person. Maybe you live a good life. Maybe you help other people. You're kind. You're generous. You're nice. And all those things are good. And we should behave like that. And we should do those things. But what I want to tell you is this. Those things cannot save you. Only Jesus can save you. Only faith in Jesus can wash away your sin. And Mary, his mother, she recognized that. She understood that. So on that day, she was there at the foot of the cross, looking to Jesus, trusting in him, and understanding that he was dying for the sins of the world. Another lady was there, was also called Mary. Her name was Mary Magdalene. When she first met Jesus, he cast seven demons out of her. So she was in a bad way. She had probably lived a sinful life, a bad life, and she had opened the door of her heart to seven terrible evil spirits. But one day she met Jesus Christ as he went around preaching. And with a word of power and authority, Jesus cast those demons out of her life and out of her heart. And from that moment, Mary Magdalene decided that she would follow Jesus Christ. You see, Mary Magdalene represents the people who have fallen deep in sin. Maybe you're watching me today. Maybe you've done many bad things. Maybe you've lived a terrible life. Maybe you've done so many bad things and you say, can God forgive me? Can Jesus Christ cleanse me from all my terrible sins? The answer is yes. 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 It doesn't matter how deep in sin you are. Jesus Christ can save you and cleanse you from your sin. And Mary represents people like you. Mary, his mother, represents the good people. And Mary Magdalene represents those who have fallen deep in sin. But they both needed to come to the cross of Jesus Christ, to look upon him by faith, and to receive that forgiveness that he purchased for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every religious group, every people on that day on the cross 2,000 years ago. And so, my friends, as I come to a close, don't be like Pontius Pilate. Don't be a card afraid to believe in Jesus. Don't be like the religious people. Don't trust in your religion because religion cannot save. Don't be like the soldiers, only interested in the things that belong to Jesus Christ, but not interested in Jesus himself. Don't be like the men just passing by and saying, very nice, very interesting, but I don't really want to get involved. Don't be like that. Don't copy their example. But instead, be like Mary, the mother of Jesus. Be like Mary Magdalene. Come by faith to the cross of Jesus Christ. You can do that today as you hear the invitation given to open your heart for Jesus and receive him as your Savior. What a powerful word this was. And maybe as you have been watching this program, you realize that Jesus Christ is not your personal Savior, that he's not a personal belief in your, in your heart, and you would like to make this decision. Do you know that he's only one prayer away from you? That right where you are at right now, you can open your heart, you can ask Jesus Christ to come and become your personal Savior. If you would like to make this decision, will you then please just put your hand upon your heart like this is a decision coming from your inner man, your heart, and then pray this prayer 
to Jesus together with me right now, just repeating from your heart this prayer that you and I are going to pray together right now. So let's pray. Jesus Christ, I believe you are the Son of God. Come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. I repent of all my sins and I want to follow you, worship you, every day the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. When you prayed this prayer from your heart, Jesus did hear that prayer with his heart. Something has happened. He's now your Savior and he's now your Lord. And now it's just important that you keep yourself close to Jesus every day the rest of your life. And let me give you three simple advices that will help you in doing so. Number one, pray to Jesus every day. It's like talking with your best friend. You can pray to Jesus at any time, at any position, and at any time and any place. Just simply start out saying, Jesus Christ, and then tell him all the good things and all the bad things that you are facing right now. That's praying. Number two, when we read in the Bible, we learn more about Jesus. Maybe you don't have a Bible, but then maybe you have a smartphone. Do you know that you for free can download the entire Bible, even in your own language, and then you have the Word of God? You can start out reading maybe in the Gospel of Luke or Gospel of Mark, and in that way you'll get to know and learn more about Jesus. And the third advice is this, that you need to be part of a fellowship of others who's also following and worshiping Jesus. Maybe you know of some that is doing that. Why don't you contact them and, and say if they can, you and them can have fellowship together uh, and worshiping Jesus together? Or maybe you know of a group or a, a, a fellowship like that in your neighborhood. Why don't you address that fellowship and ask if you can be part of that as well? But maybe you say, but there, I don't know of any like that. Then through these programs, you can also have fellowship by hearing the Word of God and praising God together. And also I'll encourage you, if you prayed this prayer, I'll encourage you to contact our call center. There's people sitting there waiting for you to contact. And they will be willing and helpful in answering questions and talking with you and, um, and praying with you. And um, in that way, you'll get advice in what to do as the next step. These three things will help you follow Jesus. Now, thank you for watching this new life. Hope that you'll be with us again next week. May God bless you.